coming this way right now. Oh, are they? Yeah. Okay.
today's event and our demands to uh, recognize that racism is a local issue. So first and foremost, I want to thank everybody for coming out here and supporting. This, this is amazing. I didn't expect this to be this good. So I thank y'all. Um, 
I see people from many different races, age, ethnicities, everything. So I want to thank y'all for that. All the young people, we got to understand that we are our future. If we want change, we want it now. We have to speak up now. We can't wait for the next generation to do something. We need to do something right now. You know, it's unfortunate that we have to continue to see people lose their lives for our voices to be heard. But what to understand is that we won't stop fighting. We won't stop speaking up. I don't care. They're going to hear our voice. I don't care. We need to march from Cleveland to Akron. But they're going to hear our voice and we're going to demand change. I don't care how long it's going to take, but we're going to get change. We've been fighting too long. This is long overdue. But I promise one day, we're going to have our justice and the voices that, I mean, the people that have lost their lives, their names are going to be heard. Our voices are going to be heard. So once again, I want to thank everybody for coming out and support people that are here, people that are here in spirit. I appreciate you guys. And I'm going to pass it off to Real Gospel Church for a prayer. Thank you. Which art in heaven on the would be thy name, thy king done come. Thy On earth as it is in heaven, yes, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our debts 
as we forgive our debtors, but lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory Thank you. So up next we have a word from Principal James from Cleveland Metropolitan School District. So please welcome her up. My mom, so. Good afternoon, everybody. Wow, this is amazing. It's so amazing to see all of your faces, the support. Um, before I even start, I have to say how proud I am of these young people. I mean, it just. Oh yeah. It brings tears to my eyes and I'm I'm so proud and thankful that God has given me a daughter like that one right there who came to me a couple of days ago and said she wasn't even in town. She said, Mom, will you walk? And I said, Where are we walking to? She said, We're gonna walk from my house to, to the school. And I said, Sure. And then from that, along with all of these other young people, they have put this together. And from the community and the city, uh, the mayor, um, Officer Zellner, who stopped by just to have a word with her, our pastor. I thank all of you, Mayor Yates. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We know the numbers. We know the disproportionate, uh, the numbers that are disproportionate with our minorities, especially our blacks, that are falling victim at the hands of police officers at the, of the community. We know the injustice. We know the things that are happening. And I'll say to you that unfortunately there are just a few. There are just a few who do not believe in what we believe, which is justice, which is equity. I know that my husband is a police officer. He goes out every day along with most officers to do the right thing. To stand here with us to make sure that they're protecting and they're serving us. And it's unfortunate that it's just a few who bring this bad reputation to, to police officers. And so first I wanna say thank you officers, thank you to the community, thank you for all of those that protect and serve us. But guys, we are here today to make sure that justice is served. We are here today to stand on be in behalf of those people who cannot stand here themselves. We're here to stand for the George Floyds. We're here to stand for the Ahmaud Aubrey's. We're here to stand for the Tamir Rice's. We're here to stand for all of those whose names have not been mentioned, whose names that we don't know, but who fall victim every day. And we know that together, we are stronger than we are apart. We have to make sure that when they see us, they're not scared of our faces. Does, does my face look scary? Does your face look scary? We have to make sure that we are not, they are not afraid of us, they are not scared of us. That we are receiving the same respect that we are receiving the same opportunities that everybody else is receiving. We need to make sure our word is heard. We cannot take away from what the real meaning is here by all of the looting, by all of the craziness that we see on TV because they're not here showing us. They're not showing this. My pastor was out marching last Saturday. They didn't show that peaceful march, but guess what? They showed all the craziness that was going on in our city. And right now, I've been a resident in this city for over 15 years and I love Twinsburg. And yes, there are problems here just like there are anywhere else. But this is here where everybody, everybody that's right here shows what we are about. We show what this city is about. We show how we stand together, how we live together, how we play together, how we fight together. And I appreciate every one of you all. Please keep these families in prayer. Stand for what you know is right. Not
not because somebody else tells you to do something that you know isn't right. Stand for what you believe in. And that's why we're all standing here. Bless every one of you all. Would well, Mark Curtis from the school board like to step up? Um, he'd like to share a few words about where the future of our education is going here. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, so let me first say that um, I truly appreciate uh, the opportunity uh, to be a part of this, this, this event, and I'll even say even more, this movement uh, that is happening in our city and in our community, in the Twinsburg community. We moved here 17 years ago and never in my life would I have thought that we would be at this moment in time um, about to embark on the most significant change that has ever happened uh, in our history. So I really appreciate the fact that um, I was asked to come and be a part of this, this event. It means a lot to me. Secondly, um, it means even more to me that I'm in a position to be a representative of the black community and be a representative of our school board and be a leader in this community and be a voice for those who are not heard. I want you to know as a community that we do care and we are very intentional in the things that we do to demonstrate that. The superintendent and myself released a joint statement a few days ago denouncing the racism that is occurring around our nation, denouncing what happened to George Floyd, and making a commitment that we hear you, we see you, and we promise to do better. We must do better. We're talking about looking at our curriculum and seeing it through more of a social justice lens. We've been having those conversations. We're talking about making sure that we provide more opportunities for our staff and our teachers to become more aware of what's going on around them and also how they impact our students of color in our district. We're having those conversations. But more importantly, what we need to do and ensure that what we, what we do is engage our young people and listen to you. Because I've heard many stories of our students who have cried out and they have not been heard. We need to change that. And as president of the school board, and as a member, along with my colleagues on the school board, we will do better. We will do better, okay? Now I wanna switch hats just for a second. I don't wanna talk very long because I wanna make sure that uh, others have an opportunity to really express what they need to to say, but I am an elected official in this city, but more importantly, I'm a member of this community. I'm a father, I'm an uncle, I'm a son, I'm a black man in this community. And I don't want to become a hashtag. No person in this community, if you're a person of color, should become a hashtag for being who you are. So I want to leave you with this. I want to say something to our young people as I look out and around. It's a pretty diverse crowd and it's pretty moving to me. So to our young people, you are the next generation. Please be the agents of change that we need you to be. Do the things that are necessary so that you can be heard and that we hear you. But more importantly, 
believe in yourselves, and change the world. Thank you. I just want to thank everybody again for coming out today. Um, I have a few things to say, but I want y'all to bear with me because I tried to write something, but I was really, really trying my best, y'all. I really did. But so bear with me, bear with me. When the first person was kidnapped from the shores of Africa, we said, one day. When our black soldiers came home to be treated as less than by the people they served, we said, one day. When black bodies became objects of lust and desire, we said, one day. When the next, oh, when civil rights leaders like Medgar Evans, MLK, Malcolm X, Huey P. Newton, Fred Hampton, Harry and Harriet and Moore were murdered for amplifying our voices, we said, one day. When the next generation of black leaders were systematically removed from our community through mass incarceration, state violence, and social segregation, and countless other atrocities, we said, one day. When I walked into the classroom of Twinsburg, my first day here, I said, and I didn't see any faces that looked like mine, I said, one day. When the radiance of my skin blinded the humanity my classmates and schoolmates showed me, I said one day. When they used their words and their hands to attack me, I said one day. When I was forced to protect myself from them and their violence, and my teachers and parents, and my teachers and principals failed to ask why, I said one day. When I never had a single teacher in this district, at least that I was assigned, that looked like me, I said, one day. When our Black History Club advisors from THS made personal and financial sacrifices without compensation to give us a voice, I said, one day. When we were censored from saying Black Lives Matter on the stage, I said, one day. The day after the election in 2016, as I fought to control my tears, my fears, and my emotions in THS halls, and my teachers laughed and mocked, I said, one day. Well, Twinsburg, I got something to say to y'all. Today is the day, and the time is now. The time is now that we are intentional about the policies that our community adopts. The time is now that we sit down and we, we, we're critical of the curriculum that we're teaching our students. Today is the day where we adopt policy that requires teachers to go through uh, implicit bias trainings. Today is the day. day because no other member of this community could, should have to go through what I went through. Today is the day because nobody else, no little child in Wilcox or Dodge should be fighting the way I fought. <laughs> Today is the day because we're a community that prides itself on diversity but has been complicit in silencing black voices. Today is the day. Today is the day we start listening, not only with our ears, but with our hearts. Today is the day that we think crucially about the history of this city, the history of this nation, and we do what we can to change it. Time and time again, the city, members of the city have failed to recognize that racism, racism is a local issue. It's all across. It's not an issue that needs to be fixed in Cleveland or anywhere else. We need to fix it here first. 
We, we have the community and the resources to be uh, proactive instead of reactive. We have the community and the resources and people who are dedicated to change that we should be leading, not following. <sighs> Y'all, today is the day because we shouldn't have to wait for another national revolution to have this conversation. Today is the day because in a pandemic, we came out with masks on. Today is the day because if we don't start today, there might not be tomorrow. Today is the day, y'all, and it is a local issue, and I'm excited. I'm excited for the conversations that are going to come from today. I'm excited for a district that's going to not only teach that we, we, we don't support racism, that we, we criticize racism, we punish racism, but we teach how to be anti-racist. We teach about the systems that are in place that are not the same for me as my white brothers and sisters. Okay? Today is the day. And I'm excited, y'all. I'm so excited. And I thank God that everybody's here today because it's important that we remember that this is the beginning. This is only the beginning. And I'm going to keep calling on all y'all. All y'all, because this is a fight that's going to keep on going until we are leaders in this revolution. Thank you. Now, I, um, I recognize that I might not be the only one that had something to say today. So, we're going to open up uh, the stage today for anybody that likes to share their own experiences, um, to amplify black voices, anything um, that is appropriate. Now, there are rules. There are definitely rules. Remember, we started this as a day of love, not hate. So when you come up to the stage, make sure you're teaching love and not hate. Make sure you're respecting the equipment. Make sure you're respecting the audience and respecting time, because y'all, don't nobody want to be up here watching somebody talk for 20 minutes, for real. We, I know, I'm just being a for real. So, everybody get around two to three minutes. Um, and, I, and most importantly, it's, it's time that we respect this import, the importance of this moment. moment. We have the community's attention. We have community leaders here that marched alongside us. And it's time that we give them an opportunity to listen to us. So if anybody would like to come on up, I know it's hard to surrender yourself to be the first one. All right, come on, come on. You want to say something? Mary Yates. Um, and then you can come on around next. We can just start a line over here. If anybody needs any water, they are distributing water at that picnic table over there. They're raising their hands, so make sure y'all stay hydrated. We don't need anybody coming out. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just want to say how proud I am of, of this community. Um, how proud I am of the young people that have come out today. Um, we have a lot to learn from our younger generation. And hopefully, uh, as parents, as leaders, we can look to them uh, for our future because that is that is so important. Um, today talked about conversations. Um, these are difficult conversations. Um, these are conversations that I want to have. I think these are conversations that you want to have. Um, today, with the amount of people here today, our, our voices were heard. Um, I heard about this yesterday and I didn't hesitate to want to be part of it. Um, hopefully that says a lot about the people that are in this community, running this community. We've got officers here. We have our chief of police here. Um, my law director showed up, who's a prosecutor in this town. That says a lot. He doesn't live in Twinsburg, but he showed up today because he's part of this movement and he's part of what we're trying to do here in Twinsburg. Um, you know, the theme at my church this year is love matters most. And who would ever have thought that in 2020, love matters most we'd be standing here today talking about love. And that's really what this is about. I met with local pastors, I've met with Pastor Tracy, I've met with Calvin Brown, who's here today, um, just to try to create dialogue. And that's, I don't know where I can go, I don't know what I can do, but I know I'm in a position to do something here in Twinsburg. Um, and I promise you that I will try to do that. Um, I will do that with every resource that I have, I will open up those conversations, I will create dialogue, and I will try to make Twinsburg a better place um, for, tomorrow's, for tomorrow's residents. So thank you for 
what you've done today, and I look forward to the journey we're on um, as we make progress here in Twinsburg. Thank you. Before the speakers come up, uh, is there someone who can represent the, is, let's see here, one of the police officers, if they could come, if Chief, no, is Chief still here? Where's Chief? I don't see. Oh, there, come on, Chief. We want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. Come on, give him a round of applause. Come on, Chief, we want to hear from you. Well, I thought you were gonna hop on stage right here, but okay. <laughs> All right, don't hurt anything. But if you do hurt yourself, we'll pray for you. Amen. <laughs> Thanks. You know, I've been a police officer wearing a uniform for 29 years, the last 23 here in Twinsburg. And, uh, you know, this is my third stop. I worked two other places, and when my wife and I decided that uh, we wanted to start a family, I wanted to go work for a department in a community that was diverse, a place where we could raise our children, where our children could respect and understand differences, uh, race, creed, and color. And you know what, we did that. We ended up here in Twinsburg. And I can't tell you how proud I am, not only to be the chief of police here, but here, but to live here. This is a great community, is it not? This has been a very emotional two weeks for me. Um, I've been angry, I've been sad, I've been depressed, um, shed some tears. Uh, never in a million years did I expect to see uh, somebody who wore a badge like mine, took the oath to protect and serve, and murder somebody. And it's shocking, and it's shocking to the members of my department because that's not how we police here. We don't stand for that. We're, not, we're never going to stand for that because that's not who we are. We're not separate from you. We're part of you. We're part of this community, and that's where the strength lies. When we've been low, when we've been down, you've picked us up. And when we've made our mistakes, and we have, you've supported us as long as we did the right thing and corrected those mistakes. And we'll continue to do that. You know, policing in the United States, it's an honorable profession when you have the right people doing the right thing. And I, I tell people all the time, I am so blessed because I have, I work with the best people in the world, people who will be there, who will do things the right way. We will continue to have conversations. My door has always been open as 14 years as chief, and it will continue to be open. I want to hear, I want to listen. I want to have two-way conversations because I want to be able to explain us and who we are and what we do and why we do it and how we do it, and then hear from you because a police department has to be reactive to its community. It's, there's not a copy, there's not a cookie cutter uh, template for it. We have to be what our community wants us to be. And that's my commitment to you for as long as I'm still a police officer here in the city of Twinsburg, is we will be what you want us to be. Yeah. Thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tanya Johnson Lardell. Yes, I love my babies. I am so proud of this moment. I stand here as a representative. Well, let me back up, because first and foremost, I'm a lifelong resident of Twinsburg Heights. And I stand here so proud of this movement to see this change. I can truly say I graduated from R.B. Chamberlain in 1990, and I can truly say the district has changed. We've come a long way, but we know we got more work to do. When we were in school, 
we were not allowed to be a cheerleader because of the color of our skin. And that's the honest truth. But we were okay, we survived because we're strong. We were on drill team, so it gave us an outlet. And that's the most important thing. I work at the high school, and I'm also a representative elected official of Twinsburg Township. So I'm here to serve you and have been serving you at the school district for almost 16 years. I am very blessed to be in the position that I am to help our black students. When I started at the high school, again, there's not many of us black staff members there. And so the kids would always come to me. They saw somebody that they can identify with, and I became a mother to not just the black students, but the whites, the Asians, and everyone else. They were able to see me, I was visible to them, so I've had a lot of conversation with probably a lot of you out here in the audience today. And I am so grateful and thankful that I was been able to put in a position to help you guys and help mold and shape you to the young men and women that you are today. So I'm very grateful for that. I am also and have been the advisor for Black History Club for about 13 years. I did dedicate my time. I did volunteer my time without payment, but I was doing it for the kids. I didn't look at it as I needed compensation. I was doing something rewarding to give our students an outlet. When I started back in 2016, no, 2006, I'm sorry, with the Black History Club, it was a poetry club at the high school at the time that was ran under one of our former guidance counselors, Jackie Cradgett. And we started our first production in 2006 where I worked with her and the group of students at that time, Brandy Jackson and Brittany Jackson, the doctors here that graduated from the high school. Um, so I worked with a bunch of students at that time to put on our first production that we wrote from scratch. Of course, th throughout the years, it's been very time consuming, but again, I looked at it as rewarding and an outlet for the students here. Most recently, Nia was very proactive in one of our Who Are We? where we had to actually educate some of our kids on our history to be able to do our production. And that was done in 2018? 19? Okay, see, I'm getting old. Mm -hmm. Time, time. I do too much. <laughs> but, um, so we have been very active in doing what we can do I have been active, let me put it like that, in doing what I could do to service our students, and I will continue to support you, serve you, and help you. I am a community leader, so conversations with me, I welcome. Um, being a true Twinsburger, as I always say, I'm very proud of who I am and where I am and where I live in the Twinsburg Heights area. Um, so that's a predominantly black area. My great-grandparents were one of the first ones that settled here when they came down south. So there's a lot of history. I know sometimes you guys hear a lot of negativity about the heights and the crime, but I'm a true testimony of what exists up there on that hill. <laughs> and it's not just about crime. We have educated people. Brittany and Brandy Jackson lived in the heights. They're now doctors. We have Kelly Herndon, who was in the NFL. So we have talent up there on the hill. So don't be afraid to explore the city, the township. Get to know your surroundings and understand that it's peace up there too on the hill. The Voices of the Hill documentary, if you haven't had a chance to see that, you will see my family on that video. We are representing Twinsburg and have always represented Twinsburg. So if you get a chance, please check out that documentary to get an understanding. Because once you have an understanding, you feel more peace and you have that knowledge of what really goes on and what has really taken place for many, many years. Right now, before I leave the stage, I just want to ask, I know we have some staff members in the audience, some of our teachers, some of our staff members, if you guys could come forward. Some of them are wearing their Black History shirts that we ordered last year. If you guys want to just come forward, just so they can see the support of our staff, that we are united. Regardless of the color of our skin, we are united, and we're here for the common purpose of helping our students. So please, this is great. <laughs> this is who we are. We're here for you all.
Thank you very much for being the other organizers of this event. Oh, we got more coming up. This is great. This is who we are. We're here to stand strong for the kids in our district, and we fight hard each and every day for you all. We're here for you. Thank you. Anybody want to say anything? And as a THS alum, I thank all of you guys for all the service you've done for our community and advocating for us. Thank you. We're going to bring up our next speaker. Hi. Hello. You know me. If you don't, I'm Graham Callahan, THS alumni 2019. Woo! Um, Mia's speech was so beautiful. I cried. I'm a crier. I'm so proud of everything that she's done here. And some of the words that really resonated was her talking about um, her experience as at THS with those moments of what you would call, I guess, racial microaggressions, which are just as hurtful. They're just as hurtful, just as damaging, just as painful as some of the more like physically violent things that you see. And I wanted to talk about my experience with that because these are moments that will go with me for the rest of my life. And I'm so grateful and glad that I have strong black parents who have always told me who I am, yeah. where I come from. Yeah. And I worry for those who do not have parents like mine to reassure them. When I was um, in the 12th grade, AP Lit, I've always been an AP student, honor student, always trying to get those you know, college credits and always educationally grinding because my parents always told me, you are black, you are going to have to work twice, three times, four times, five times as hard as the little white girl next to you, as the little white boy over there, you're always gonna have to work a thousand times harder. And in those classes, in the AP Lit, the literature that we read all written by white people, all written by white people, maybe one story, short story, put in there, written by someone who was black. And I remember we were reading the book, Heart of Darkness. And it upset me, because if you're not familiar with Heart of Darkness, it's about, um, I vaguely remember, uh, I don't know, people going into the Congo in Africa, and to them, that was a heart of darkness. In liter a literary sense, it was representation of evil. Africa, the heart of our people, where we come from, where man was made. This book was telling me Africa is the heart of evil. And in that book, I remember so vividly the descriptions of the black people that were in that heart of darkness, described as dusty, described as dirty, described as savages. And I read that and that hurt me to see that. It hurt me to have to read that and only that. No, we didn't read anything that portrayed us as being great, as kings, as queens. I had to read things that described us as dirty. And I told my teacher, I tried to articulate to my instructor, reading this hurts me. And she said, no, you just don't get it. This is a masterpiece, a literary masterpiece. It's so good. It was so, you know, good for its time. And I said, no, this is hurting me. And she just shut me down. And she looked at me like I was some insubordinate little, and it hurt. It hurt so much that I could not articulate to my instructor that what you're teaching me is hurting me. And the fact that you're only showing us these things that portray black people as savages, as dirty, that hurts. I want to read something more than that. We deserve to read more than that. We deserve to read things by black authors. 
Black history is American history. It is our history. We are all intertwined. And there are more stories to be told than stories of us being lynched, of stories of us being stolen. It's important to educate on that. But also, where is the black excellence that I know we have? We are excellent. We are brilliant. And our school district needs to do more to teach everyone that. It should be a requirement. People, sh it's not just Black History Month, it is Black History 365 days a year. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for being here today. And even though I no longer go to THS, I'm not at Kent State University, I am always trying always to- Always a tiger, Alex. Always a tiger. And I want to continue to fight for the younger generation because they deserve to be educated on how brilliant they are. Thank you. Hi, my name is Stefan Mosley. I have no prepared speech, so I just hope this comes out right. But, as speaking as a black man, I'm looking out and seeing all the white people that are here. To me, oh, okay. Speaking as a black man, I just see all the white people here. Just know that black people have been fighting for 400 years. And the only difference is we have the white people here with us helping. And that's one of the reasons why I actually moved back to Twinsburg and I wanted to raise my family here because it's bad white people everywhere, but it's not good white people everywhere. And I want my son to stand up here and see that, and that we are not alone. So thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Stephanie, and I'm not from this community, but I know about this community. And what I just want to get up here today, and just I'm, I'm just proud of these young people, because we need more young people like this to get up to lead. And I tell my children every day, just try to be the leader, not a follower. But what I really want to say, because it saddens my heart, that we are here fighting and we need justice and we need peace. But I want us as black people, we, it has to start with us too. I hear a lot of the kids, because I'm an educator, and I always tell my black kids, stop treating each other like you don't want to be treated by other people. So we have to start somewhere too and take accountability. It's not right. I grew up in the suburbs too and it's, it's been a fight all my life. I've been called a nigger and I never knew color because my parents didn't teach me color. Everybody was equal to me. So to fight and not knowing what I was fighting for when I'm five years old getting rocks thrown at me going to Bedford school saying I'm a nigger and I'm going home like what's a nigger? So we have to stop using that word. We have to really start saying our lives do matter. Our lives do matter. And we have to stop hating on each other first. Stop hating and beating each other, shooting each other, because then that means our lives do really matter. Let's start with us. I just did, that's all I wanted to say, but I love this peaceful protest. We do not have to go out here tearing up people's business to say what we want. We deserve everything that everybody else deserves because we all are beautiful queens and kings. And we have to start saying that to ourselves. I love you, my beautiful sister. I love you, my beautiful brother. You are my king. You are my queen. And we have to love. It's all about, if we want change, we have to really make that change. And change is not going to be easy. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be hard. But we have to really stick to this. We might get hit. We might get beat up. But if we really want change, we have to really want change. Thank you. I just want to add... I know that probably some of y'all were hearing the word she said is the derogatory terms and thinking that, well, at least that doesn't happen here in Twinsburg. I want y'all to know that it does. It does. It happened to me. It happened to me regularly. So I just wanted to point that out. I just want to say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, uh, 
I'm like, I, I was waiting for the right time to come in, and I couldn't come in with the, the girl that was getting all the A's because I school didn't bother me. I went to sleep in school. <laughs> but uh, when it all boils down, when the sister just goes to talking to us, she, she's not from there. But this is how you do a rally. I'm from Chagrin Falls. Been there like 14 years by way of Twinsburg. This is a beautiful community. And these girls, man, I'm telling you, that's why God speaks in Proverbs. He called wisdom she. And it's more precious than gold. And it, I mean, it has nothing that no one else can desire. And looking at these young black women standing up here, man, giving it. You know, I uh, went through a uh, chagrin last week. Uh, and the reason I'm here is like, why are you here? My why is because I have a little mixed girl. She's in chagrin. I try to give her education. I'm getting educated through all this. I was a fighter. You guys might remember me. I fought world champs. And uh, won. I got all the films I won, the ones I lost, I threw them away, but anyway. <laughs> it's all about coming together, man, in unity, but this is how you do it. I mean, I was called out in Chagrin Falls to, you know, they see me, it's like everything was going on, we need your help, because they don't know. But see, our future is in with you kids, like you, you, you young people now. You gotta be empowered, there's a way to do it, but you know what, you got so much energy and so much love to wanna reach out and, and learn who you are. You know, and I went through my first trials, and I can say about Twinsburg Finest, you know. I call cases, you know, they just call a fool, you can look me up. I turned my life around, but it was because the right people, and as the brother just said, you got the right people everywhere, but it's good to see us standing together in unity. Can I get an amen? Amen! It's good to see, you know, because like I said, when I went through Twinsburg being arrested, and the chief, it was something. I just, I woke up this morning, someone called me and said, you know, we're going to have a rally. And you know when you're led by the Lord and, you know, not no religious folks, but, you know, because church folks turn me out, but religious people I can praise with. <laughs> but, you know, they called me on the phone and said, come out. And I just was led to come out. And the first person I ran into when I first got in trouble was the chief of police here. And that was about 20 years ago. And I'm looking at him. He was about 50 pounds lighter, but anyway. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just looking at it, and, and the prosecutors here that was there, and they looked at me, and the judge looked at me. See, when you get in favor, you get favor. You get, we need favor right now. We need everybody to step up and don't be about it. You know, don't talk about it, be about it. And what I'm just saying, I was out in Chagrin, they did a rally, but you guys are doing it. You guys are doing it. Because you have the peace and you have the mixture. It's like a civil war, civil uh, war fight. You got, you know, the North against the South. We know who the South was for, and we know who the North was for. The free slaves, but see, Underground Railroad wasn't built by African Americans. It's built by some of the uh, Caucasians, you people you see standing with you. But it's all about change, man. I can go on and on because I have a little girl. She was racial, and everybody turned the other cheek. They were, she was racial abuse. And she grinned, and they turn the cheek, they turn, but they can't turn no more. But see, but it's all about peace, and it's all about love, because we're bringing attention to it, because you know what? Enough rioting, enough crazy stuff, you know? But that got the attention. But now it's time to go and doing things the right way. And like I say, I give these girls a hand, I'm telling you. They, they, threw, they threw it together. You know, I know there's always two speeches, and one you said and one you should have said. But one thing I'm going to say, it's all about love, you guys live in a beautiful, loving community. It's all about peace. That peace that passes understanding. And right, they say it's about now getting knowledge. It's about getting knowledge about who you were. Because you know, you know, man, I, I, you know, like I said, my life was not tough because I was an athlete, and you know, athletes get certain privileges right now. But I just want to thank all you guys for coming out, for you know, supporting the right reason and supporting it in love. Show them how you do it. Praise God. Thank you, thank you. I'm at the process. Let me call you back. My black brothers, sisters, and siblings, I want you to know that I see you. As a white man, I cannot possibly begin to imagine the depth of your suffering that you experience, have experienced, for thousands of years based on something as trivial as the color of your skin. I cannot feel your pain, but I want you to know that I empathize with you, that I see your pain, and that pain hurts me. That pain divides our society, and we cannot stand that way. And as a show of solidarity, I would like to read a poem by Claude McKay. Claude McKay was a civil rights leader from the 1920s who moved to America from Jamaica to seek his fortune. But like so many young people of color, 
In America, he was faced with systemic oppression, police brutality, and countless other obstacles to his success, simply because of the color of his skin. This poem is called If We Must Die, and it was written in 1919 as a response to a series of white supremacist attacks that have come to be known as the Red Summer. This is If We Must Die by Claude McKay. If we must die, let it not be like hogs, hunted and penned in an inglorious spot, while round us bark the mad and hungry dogs making their mock at our accursed lot. If we must die, oh, let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. Then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us, though dead. O oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe, though far outnumbered, let us show us brave. And for their thousand blows, deal one death blow. What though before us lies the open grave? Like men, we'll face the murderous, cowardly pack, pressed to the wall, dying, but fighting back. Everybody. Uh, hey! Uh, so, me and my good, good friend Kylie Hollis, we are graduates of Twinsburg High School. Yeah! We didn't intend to get up here, but we listened to Nia, we listened to her speak, and we were inspired to share a poem that we wrote for Black History Month when we were students at THS, my senior year, Kylie's junior year. Um, and before we start, I would like to say that one of the stories was written by our good friend Diavian Washington, who yeah. I'm sad to say that she's not here to read it with us, but I want to make sure that you guys know that's her story. And I would also like to thank the teachers that inspired us to write it, Miss Johnson, yes. Miss Pinckney, yes. and Mrs. Wolf. Thank you. The next time. The first time I realized I was black, made me feel like my life was on the wrong track. Five years old, walking through my grandpa's door, I never dreamt I would leave feeling so sore. He stared into my eyes and questioned how his Irish blood flowed through my veins, how his legacy would be lived through a granddaughter he wouldn't even claim. I began to look around, and to my surprise, none of the faces on the wall looked anything like mine. He was ashamed. My sun-kissed skin, knotty curls, and full lips made him spew out hatred. He said, just slip. As I walked to the car to my own discretion, I began to hide the immense feelings of oppression. And at the time, I didn't realize it, was, it wasn't me he loathed, but the never-ending insecurity that lived within his own soul. And I, at the tender age of five, with skin dark as brown sugar, began to conceal a soul filled with much vigor I was already accustomed to feeling deprived of my identity, exposed to unnecessary obscenity, and stripped of my internal serenity. The first time I realized I was black, I sat in a quiet classroom with my pink backpack. Six years old with the habit of doing what I was told, I believed everything. My teacher asked a question in search of a solution, and so I raised my hand to offer my contribution. She studied me silently with a sobering stare, and she proceeded to ignore my hand in the air. And it wasn't so much that she instead chose another, a girl with blonde hair and skin of lighter color. It was the blatant disdain she displayed at my own hand so proudly raised. And then I knew everything. I went from invincible to invisible, from confident to confined, from an outspoken child to one who never spoke her mind. What I learned that day was to keep my hand down. How could I possibly know the answer? I was brown. The first time I realized I was black, I sat on a red swivel chair with my head pressed back, with ivory hands running through my hair, and at first I really didn't care, until I felt her stare, and I knew my hair looked like dark vines that could not be tamed, and I began to feel myself sink into the quicksand of shame, and each time her hands left my manes, I would look to make sure my blackness hadn't seeped from me and left her hands stained. And I always knew my hair didn't flow like running silk or glisten in the golden sun, but I didn't know my hair was where my blackness begun. 
I didn't know I was black until I realized my hair was too heavy for her to hold, until I wished her my lion locks away and allowed her to be the hunter and me the prey. You never know you're black until you can feel the weight of your skin, until you remember how whip breaks the wind, until you can hear the echoes of the unheard, until you acknowledge the women and men who built the White House on their black backs. But our history transcends the waters we were forced upon. We often forget that we are not as tangled as our roots, that we are more than what's portrayed in history books. Your skin has never been a symbol of surrender but a representation of strength. Your hair has never been the mess of weeds, it's always been the bed of a crown. Being black is not a thing to be ashamed of, even if the one who shames you is of your own blood, never walk away defeated, never sink into your chair, never put your hands down because each time you raise it, you defy the laws of gravity and bigotry. And with your head, your hair, your hand held high, you revitalize your community. So the next time you realize you're black, don't feel that there's something you lack. Don't be defined by your absence, but by your presence. Let the booms and the bangs and the clicks and the clangs of the Congo's boisterous beats remind you that you are not a product of defeat, that you did not come, a, come from a land of less than gold, and that the beauty of your brown skin makes you bold, and your story is something that needs to be told the next time. like so many of the people who have already spoken and so many of the people here, a graduate of Twinsburg High School, class of 2020. Yes! Yeah. Woo. And I want to talk about how black history and culture is portrayed through our education system because there is a bias and it needs to change. And I think that with all of this support, we can change it little black boys and girls and children say one really wants to be an inventor they deserve to know about more than just peanut butter because there are so many more black inventions than are what are talked about little black boy gr boys girls children who want to become authors deserve to know that they there are more role models than Maya Angelou, and Maya Angelou is wonderful, but there's so much more than what is discussed in school. My fellow Shakespeare nerds finding out there's only one black character in a Shakespeare play, and it's Othello. There is so much more out there, and our school system needs to start talking about black history and black culture. Because Black history is American history. We always say, oh hey, it's on a sign right there. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. Um, we say that jazz music is the great American art form that was built on the backs of black artists. So much of American culture came from these beautiful black voices that need to be amplified and not silenced any longer. This is a good district. There are so many good people here who care about equality and justice. And I, we can't let this be where the conversation ends. Not today. It's not, today is not going to be where the conversation ends. It has to keep going. Keep signing petitions and talking and engaging in discussions with people because Today is the day, but it's not the only day. It's the start, and we all have a duty to keep it going. Thank you. Can I get one of these? I'll give you that. There we go. <laughs> okay, I can breathe for a minute. Um, I, I just want to take a few minutes to thank the organizers, Mia and all the parents, I'm sure there was a few. I, I look out over the sea of people here. This is absolutely amazing. We have such a cross cut of America here. I want to thank all of the Twinsburg residents, all of the residents from everywhere. I have a friend from Macedonia over here. I've seen people that have come for this cause, that have come here to support this, to stand up against what is wrong, to stand up for what is right. 
I would especially like to thank the people who have bringing for, been bringing forward their stories of wrongdoing, of injustice, of bad things. It, it has enabled me to learn. I, I never thought in a million years that this kind of stuff would still be going on in our happy little community. And when I read about these stories, it just sickens me to the core. I, I appreciate the bravery of those who have stepped up to say this is real, this is happening, and this is wrong. I want to thank all the young people. There was a group in front of me that my, mem my moment's going to be a lot less memorable than that. But that gives me hope that this next generation coming up, they get it, they understand it. They are here to make that difference now. Something that apparently my generation missed out on. And we need to continue this moment, just like Sydney said. This isn't the start, or this isn't the end. This isn't the last moment. This is the start of something big. Thank you very much. Okay, just to make sure that we're um, abiding by our time, we're supposed to be back at the school about 3.30. So the people who are in line to speak, um, you know, we're going to cut that off from the last person in the line. And just make sure if you want to speak, just keep it between like an, a minute and a half, two minutes, just so we can make sure we stay on schedule. Thank you. All right. Well, hello, everyone. If you don't know me, my name is Garrett Critchlow, proud alumni of Twinsburg. <laughs> Proud son of Gustavus Critchlow and Marlisa Critchlow. Yes. Brother of Olivia Critchlow. Yes. First of all, thank you for everyone coming out. I see familiar faces, I see new faces out there. And I just love everyone that's around here, in this whole town, this whole city. And sadly, yes, I have been a victim of racism in my own town. Multiple times, actually, especially when I go out for runs. But... It's, I realize when I think back on this town of all the bonds that I made, unforgettable bonds and people that I get to grow and love, I'm better than that. So when I get out there, I just, I'm not afraid to fight for my rights, but at the same time, don't spread that hate. Don't come towards me. I don't like it. I love everyone. If I did, if I'm good to you, you'll be good to me. We'll all get along, all right? I just want to come up here and thank everyone that's here. All the teachers, all the staff members, everyone that's out here. I love every single one of you. You don't understand how much that means to me, especially coming out here, all right? And I'm just going to keep running for you guys. I'm going to keep fighting for you guys. And I'm going to just be staying strong for everyone here, all right? This is big. This is a big time for us. It's time for change, and we are going to get it. And this is the time right now. Thank you. Hi, my name is Joanne. I have five daughters, four that graduated from Twinsburg. I, I, I have four grandkids that graduated so far with many more to come. <laughs> but uh, th being a part of this today is really special. And uh, I just, it made me think of a, a poem too. It says, if the world thinks for one minute it can separate me from you, let it try. It would have to take my brain apart, cell by cell. But you know what? Somewhere within a half a cell, there would still remain memories of you. And uh, this day, like I said, it's, it's very special. And it's been a long time coming, but it's here. And we already started our little trot, so let's run with it. Yeah. Hi, my name is Cody Pride. And I couldn't stand there and not say something. I am a proud parent, Twinsburg mom, tiger mom, and as I thought about it, I thought back to my high school favorite quote, and it was, it's better to do what is right than what is easy. Hmm. It would be easy to stay home. It would be easy to turn the channel. It would be easy to not protest. It would be easy to just be okay. It would be easy, but it wouldn't be right. And right now, I know that we come together. I have never been so proud 
to be part of this community, to look out and see the same amount of people that I see at a basketball team, the same ones we see at a baseball team. We know how to come together for that, but we also know how to come together to be the change that we want to see. The change starts with a conversation at home, at the table. Then from the table, it can change the table, it'll change the room, it'll change the home, and then it'll change the street, and then it'll change the community, and then it'll change the city, and before you know it, it'll change the region, before it changes the reason, and then it'll change the nation, and one day, it will change the world. Yeah. So the one thing is, I'll just leave with this. I love the serenity prayer, it says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. To the school, to the citizens, to the police force, to the children, thank you for having the wisdom to know what we can change. This is just the start. We will see a change. Please keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. The tears I cry, they don't come out brown. The tears you cry, they don't come out white. The blood I bleed is the same color as the blood you bleed. And I am so grateful because after three daughters, I have a son. And we're not standing here with a Twinsburg student with a hashtag standing there because we love someone we know we're standing here because it is a human right to live so thank you thank you thank you oh, wow. hi i'm cameron i just graduated ths uh 2020 Um, and I wanted to say, I'm going to keep this short, but I've been in Twinsburg since first grade. I, I grew up here. I'm only 17 years old and I've experienced so much in my life to, lifetime, racism especially. When I was younger, my sister and I used to walk to the store often. When we were there, the, the store owner said to us, only one of you can come in at a time, only one of you. He asked us to open our bags and things like that. If you don't think it happens here, I want to tell you that you're wrong. It does. It happens on our community. It happens in our community. It's not something that just happens on our phones. It's not something we just see on TV. It happens here, too. <sighs> Racial injustice is something that plagues our own community. I just wanted everybody to know. I fear for my life when I'm driving home and I see a police officer behind me. Many of my friends don't share that same fear that I have when I get pulled over. I fear for my life. I fear that I won't see my mom again. I fear that I won't see my sister again. And I just wanted to say, it starts with us. Like I said, I just graduated. And I see a lot of my friends here from my class. I just want to say it starts with us. We have to be the change that we want to see in our own community. It has to start with us. Thank you. All right, so for those of y'all who don't know, my name is Faith Gregory. I'm also a THS graduate of 2020. And um, I just wanted to let everyone know that be the change that you want to see in the world. It starts with you, it starts with your household. Like Mrs. Pride was saying, it starts in your heart and it starts with love. You need to spread love and not hatred. Like, just spreading a hatred, it just, it gets the, it get just, it makes the worst out of people. Like, it just doesn't, I'm not saying who you are. You need to stand up for things that you believe in. You need to not let your voice be silenced. So just a little quote that I want to leave with you guys is that the day you the day you become silent about things that matter is the day that you know it the day that your lives begin to end. Why do stand if you stand for something then you know you won't fall for anything. You can stand up, make that change in the world and 
just there's no way I couldn't be here with my community and I appreciate you all standing with me and showing your support so Everybody. My name is Danielle Efert Mason and I am a Twinsburg alumni. I graduated in 2006 and I am standing here on behalf of our predominantly black team that was called the Twinsburg Step Team. So if I do have anybody out here that was also on the Step Team, I just ask that you join us, whether you were an advisor, a coach, um, a staff member that helped, I just ask that you come up. Miss Reed, Miss Rich. <laughs> so, where y'all at? Pull up. Pull up. Come on. Okay. So, I remember being a part of a mostly black organization where we had the art where we had the hardest obstacles that we went through so i played two roles in the step team the first role that i played was a member i remember going to competitions and winning first place we would go to these competitions we'll work hard with these advisors and we will win these trophies and if you know twinsburg you walk through the halls and you see the showcases where you got all the teams that have won any trophy they're out there but our trophies was put into a small corner by Miss Rich's desk. But that's not racism, right? An all black team. So the second part of this that I played on the step team was actually an advisor. So I came back after graduating and I coached the step team. And I remember one of the like Board of Education people coming to me, Ariel, Jordan, and Alicia and told us that we were not allowed to have shirts on that said that we were a coach. I don't know what bothers somebody by having this on the back of their shirt, but we were no longer allowed to call ourselves coaches. We worked hard with the girls and I was happy to be a part of a black group, but for whatever reason, Twinsburg never wanted to recognize us as a black group. So going back even to 2005, when I started the step, or when we started step team, they always wanted to say, well, you guys need three years to become official. Well, I graduated in 2006 and came back and coached. Ms. Rich, Ms. James, did we ever become official? Yeah. Yeah. Barely. Yeah. Barely. Yeah. Barely. Barely. Yeah. Anybody else's team would became official right away. So what I am saying is these people that spoke before us that are in the school district that said they are ready to change things, I hope that you're ready to change things. Yeah. And that's all that I have to say. Um, my name is Azaria Johnson. My mom spoke earlier, Tanya Johnson. Graduated Ooh. from Twinsburg 2015. Yeah. Graduated Kent. State University 2019 with a bachelor's degree in psychology and in Spanish. I didn't have anything prepared, but I, I figured, again, like other people, who would I be to just sit here and not say what I feel? So one thing that I do want to say is parents, black, white, whatever, it's important to educate your youth, especially about these elections, not just presidential, but local elections as well. That means board members, school district members, everybody. We have to look at morals, not money, morals. Peace over power. That's what's important right now. Don't think your vote does not count because it will count somewhere else, even if it is on a smaller scale. Like she said earlier, one day that small change is gonna become something bigger and better. So parents, I ask you, when your kids read about this in a couple years in a history book and ask you questions, what can you say that you personally did? Did you just sit back and let it go on? Or did you use the, the voice that God blessed you with to get out here and demand change and fight for peace? Right. Something we shouldn't have to be fighting for in the first place. But here we are today. I'm not gonna hold y'all long because now I'm feeling the spirit and I could stay up here forever, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. Another thing that I wanted to sit here and do was read my poster, if somebody could hold it up for me. Microaggression, indirect, subtle, or unintentional discrimination against members of a marginalized group. I was told, oh, you're smart for a black girl. 
Oh, you have long hair, you have pretty hair for a black girl. What does that say about you? Why couldn't you just see my hair and say I like your hairstyle? You had to add because I'm a black girl? Did you expect it to be shorter? Did you expect me to be less than you or what you have because of the color of my skin? Those count too, those matter too, and those show a lot about your character. And that's all I really have to say. God bless everybody. Thank you for being here. And thank you for giving me the mic. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Trey Montgomery, class of 2019, and I'm a currently an uh, integrated social studies education major at the University of Cincinnati. Yeah. I've been in Twinsburg my whole life, play sports here, know a lot of people here, so I know racism from both sides, especially me playing baseball. Um, you know, that's a predominantly white sport, and I was one of few, you know, brothers on the team, so um, I have a lot of experiences. But my story that I have for today is one that I experienced when I was in eighth grade at R.B. Chamberlain Middle School. I was in the computer lab with my best friend, Alex Turner, who's also black, and we were in the room with two other white students. And they asked me and Alex, can we ask you a question? And I said, yes. And they asked me, what's wrong with saying the word nigga? And I felt baffled that they had to ask me that. And we go to school and have history teachers that slightly touch slavery and all other types of black history. But I, as a 13 year old black boy, had to explain to my classmates what the word nigga meant and its historical, historical significance to us. And I just want to say it's a shame. And it's my prayer that education systems, not only here in Twinsburg, but all around the country, do a better job of teaching black history. Because if they don't do it, I will. Hi, I'm Meg and I'm a freshman in Solon High School and I'm not black. <laughs> but I wouldn't be where I am and who I am if it weren't for the black community. As a South Asian, it wasn't my South Asian community that taught me to love my skin color, it was the black community. Um, <laughs> I just wanna thank my black brothers and sisters for being the one who's been picking me up when I've fallen throughout my life. It's my turn now. Thank you. Hi everybody, I wasn't planning on saying anything today, uh, so I, I want to apologize if it's fumbled around a little bit. Uh, but I just want to say that uh, obviously my words pale in comparison to the courageous sharing of the suffering and reality of what's going on today. But I just want to say that I stand up here as basically a poster board of privilege. Uh, I'm a white, male, heterosexual, able-bodied man with a little bit of loot in his pocket. And so I, I just come up here and I say to you that I acknowledge and I want, you know, the reason I'm up here is because I see a lot of people out there who look like me. And so I think, you know, my white privilege has allowed me to wake up. And when I put my shoes on today, I said to myself, I'm going to think about racism today. I want to remind people that look like me that if you're a person of color, you don't have that luxury to think about whether you're going to think about racism today because you think about it every day. You think about it every day you get in your car. You think about it with angst every time your child gets in a car and wondering if they're going to find a murderer like that young man did in Minnesota. Okay, so also I just want to say that, uh, you know, Stefan reminded us that this is not a new concern. It's a 400-year disease that's been existing in our country. And I want to acknowledge the courage of this young lady who still, though it's been going on 400 years, has the courage to say, today is the day. Yeah. That's courage. And I'm going to say that for the rest of us who have been living in white privilege, we have the choice to say that today is the day. But I'm going to tell you what, yesterday was the day. Last year was the day. Last 20 years was the day. It wasn't the 60s, it's now. And so we have to be able to have uncomfortable conversations in a comfortable fashion. We need to acknowledge our white privilege and know that it does exist. 
And if you haven't swallowed that pill yet, then work on it. And, and, and maybe you were like me, and you grew up in Twinsburg with a good family who raised you right and treat, you know, treat everybody the same and everything. It's more than that. We need to do more. Okay, I got my summer reading, I got my Dr. Kindy, I got my Bonita Love, but it takes more than that. It takes having uncomfortable conversations with people that acknowledge our white privilege. We need to look at these microaggressions. We need to look at uh, some of these things that uh, people have to under endure. And know that it is our job, if you look like me, to listen, but it's not the person of color's job to teach us. Right. And, and it's not their responsibility. We need to do that on our own. We need to listen when folks are ready to talk, but we, not, we cannot depend on them to do it. That's us. And we've been hiding in our, with our head in our sand, our bubble of white privilege for a long time. You know, and I saw, you know, after we talked about that whole idea of 400 years of racism, and then still someone being able to say today is the day, and then beautifully sung that Lord's Prayer, which says, uh, forgive us of our debts. You know, so beautifully sung, and that sits so comfortable with us. But I'm going to tell you right now that our forgiveness, there's a penance that comes with it. Okay? We cannot just simply say that. White people, we need to forgive ourselves, obviously, in order to love ourselves. You know, because we can easily break down with that. But it comes at a cost. And what it comes is a cost of every time you see some of those things that uh, you're not comfortable with, you don't just eat it. You, you break it out to them and you break out what they're doing as something that's a part of the problem. And when somebody says, and, and, and if you haven't grown comfortable saying black lives matter yet, then dig deeper. And when someone says to you all lives matter in response, you understand that they're a part of the problem. Okay? This, these are the things that we need to become comfortable with and we need to commit to it. And not just because we put our shoes on today and knew there was gonna a bunch of, be a bunch of do-gooders holding up signs. We need to make a constant effort. Okay, so if today is the day for you, make it the day. Don't beat yourself up, I guess, because we got a long uh, fight against us. I'm tired after 10 days of thinking of this, 12 days of thinking of this. Imagine how tired you would be if you had to do it your whole life. I told my kids, the best thing you can learn is racism before you leave home. You know what it looks like? you know how it makes you feel, and you make a conscious decision what you're gonna do. You can walk around angry, and please somebody tell me, how does that fit into our world? If we do not stand together, the Bible says we will perish. It doesn't matter your color. Racism starts at home. I've heard a lot about the school. Kids are only repeating what they've heard, you know, and, and that's a hard pill to accept. When you talk about any minority and dis downgrade them, you're going to have a bias whether you realize it or not. I taught my kids, you are equal to or better than. This is your community too. And I'm saying to all of these parents, I beg people to come to council meetings. I beg people to come to school board meetings. What are you involved in that's other than sports? Mm -hmm. This is your community. You make a decision what your children have to accept. And either you are a stakeholder or you're not. We live in comfortable homes and we all look good, smell good, taste good. <laughs> but tell me the last time you came out where your children weren't the ones being acknowledged or promoted. This is a wonderful thing. I told somebody at the chief, I said, I've been arrested. I've had to call my grandparents, had to post bond. I'm past that. What I am about is, if you're a homeowner, you pay taxes. You need to know how much your government operates on. You need to know how much your school district is operating on. You need to talk to your kids about that. Racism is going to be here. It's how you decide that you want your children 
to either accept it and say, oh, woe is me. Call me an N-word. I've been called worse than that. If you've grown up in a Southern household, you know what I'm talking about. You do what you need to do to get to the goal. This is only going to make all of you all stronger. To put this together, I, I'm just so, my heart does like this. You know, when I was looking for black police officers, I had people tell me, why you keep asking that question? And I keep saying, because I had three sons. They should be able to walk in Twinsburg and people look like them. Yes. So my charge as we get ready to close out this wonderful day is invest in your community. It's easy to criticize, be in the chipmunk section. Get involved. You know, oh, I don't want to be involved. Well, they know your name. Trust me. You know, when I called the chief, I said, just put this in the folder that has my name in it. <laughs> I ain't got no problem with that. Because I'm going to stand on what I know is right. And all white people aren't bad like all black people aren't bad. But this is your community. Try that approach. Invest in your community. Hold the people accountable. When you see something wrong, say something. I don't want to hear the picnic. Because my question is, you come to the council meeting? Oh, no, I can't do that. <laughs> then don't complain to me about it. I can't wait to Tuesday. <laughs> First council meeting since March. Have a wonderful, blessed rest of your day. Y'all, they've got some stuff that they want to say about... Um, uh, a new club at THS, um, and Ms. Johnson has some uh, a, a final point she wants to bring to all of our attention as uh, members of Twinsburg. Okay, so my name is Melanie, and I just uh, got to tell y'all a story. So my biggest dream is to go to an HBCU and dance. But being in Twinsburg, it's not really much opportunity with that style of dance. I am, um, I'm a cheerleader and I'm part of drill team and I started, I tried to express my interest through there, tried to get us to do some stuff through that, but they said, oh, that's not what we do here. That's not, we, we can't do that. But so I had to go and make my own opportunity. Um, I had to go to people, talk to people. I had my cousins who attend HBCUs write me letters. I had to do research and I went to the principal and um, cried. <laughs> Asked her. That's all right. <laughs> because she was saying, oh, maybe let's uh, start next year. It's too late in the year. I said, uh uh. No, it's now. And um, she gave us the opportunity to start a club, see how it goes, and it went. It went, and we brought the HBC style of dance to Twinsburg. And, <laughs> and we are the Blue Diamonds. I had the opportunity to work with Mel being the advisor to Blue Diamonds, and I'm just so proud of her tenacity, her strength, and her courage. When the doors closed, she just pushed forward and didn't give up. And we, Dr. Hebert, Laura Hebert, the principal at Twinsburg High School, we just really want to thank her for supporting us. And just last week when I was in the office, she goes, you're doing it again, right? You're going to do it. Yes, we started something. We're not going to finish. So we just thank her. Wanted to mention that to her. And in closing, I would be remiss without mentioning the Russell family when we talk about the tragedy of black lives and how much they matter. We have to remember Timothy Russell, who grew up in Twinsburg Heights, who was shot and killed with 137 bullets in his car. He was one of us. So let's not forget our own as we deal with the tragedy of what's going on today. Please keep the Russell family 
in your prayers and continue to support them as they still grieve and go through the process of losing his life tragedy tragically thank you at this time i just want to turn the mic over to kathy powers who's our superintendent of twinsburg city school district Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say a word. You know, Mark Curtis and I are standing front and center, and we're hearing the stories that are being told this, this afternoon. And um, members of the staff from the high school know that last Wednesday, we actually engaged in a conversation with our own staff about ways that we need to do things differently and better. But it can't come from my perspective, because I can't walk in your shoes and as I said to our staff on Wednesday of last week, we need to do this together. We need to be united as Twinsburg City School District and the community that supports us. And it's going to take every one of us to do that. The stories that you told today have shaken me to the very core. I'm apologizing to you on behalf of the school district that many of your experiences were not very good. We say that we're proud and that we have many traditions. But the things that you said today cannot be the tradition that marks our school district. And so I'm going to ask each and every one of you, please reach out. Let's get together. Let's talk about how we can do things better. For those of you who are graduates, in my nine years here, you know at commencement, I always say to you, you are the change and that we are relying on you. And those just weren't empty words. I'm so proud of our graduates here who reached out to us and said enough is enough. And I want you to know that Mr. Curtis and our Board of Education stands behind what I'm saying and that we need to do this together. No one person can be a change agent that can make the deep-seated change happen for our school community, the greater community, the state and the nation. So again, I apologize to every single one of you if your experience as a Twinsburg Tiger was not a good one and that has shaken you to your very core and has become the fabric of who you are. Because clearly, we are better than that. We are stronger than that as a community and we will come together and we'll make change happen. Please reach out, we will work together to in, in integrate change that is just not a flash in the pan. That can't be. We can't have come together on a sunny June day and just did this for one day. That is not good enough for our community. So I thank you, I apologize to you, and together we're going to get this right. Thank you. So again, thank you for everybody that came up here and wanted to share their story and want their voices to be heard. Um, we also want to thank the planning team. Uh, it's a local issue. Make sure you guys follow us on Instagram. Without you guys, it wouldn't be possible. I see you guys right there with the water, the medical equipment, and everything. So I, I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for helping me because it wouldn't be this without you guys. And as we close up, I also want to mention uh, Route 91 over there, the nutrition bar. They're offering to give out free 16 ounces tea for everybody that participated in this march and protest today. So make sure you guys go over there and get some free tea. And their only request? Oh, yeah. They're also practicing social distancing. So everybody, they're only allowing 10 people in the shop at a time. So. Just make sure you guys still practice social distancing. And we're going to pass it off to, oh, here's me. It's a black owned business, so this isn't a one time thing, y'all. And not to mention, she's a proud tiger. She's a THS graduate. So we need to continue to support th that in our new business here on the square. Um, in terms of movement from here on, um, like, like Jay said, continue to follow the page for updates. Um, getting back to your cars, we want to make sure that everybody's safe. So returning back, any marchers, you need to walk on the sidewalk because cars are moving. <laughs> so make sure you're walking on the sidewalk. Make sure you're getting that tea. Um, and thank you again for everybody coming out.